Zoffman Show. We're on the Team 980. We're always live as well on the free Odyssey app. Uh, if you want to follow us on TikTok, Anthony, um, I have to I have to look up and see what my TikTok handle is. To be honest, I don't I don't remember it off the top of my head. But it's it's growing rapidly. Oh dang! I got another like hundred followers today. Uh, like since the last time we talked about it. Oh wow! Uh, I'm at Craig underscore Hoffman on TikTok. Uh, because we had a caller who called in and we posted that call on TikTok um, of him ranting about the Jahan Dotson trade and it has almost 500,000 views on TikTok. It's got 439,000 views. That's that's our uh, that's our recent claim to fame. And a lot of people were like, wow, this guy, this guy looks like he knows what he's talking about, about the commanders. We should follow him. So I got a lot of, a lot of people uh, that, are, that are DMV TikTokers that are now like, hey, more more commanders content, please. And we're like, sure, it's the season. What else do you think we're going to do? And the answer is, we're going to talk about TikTok. Because Keith Lee, uh, who is a very, very famous, like, I don't think I fully understood. I've known who Keith Lee is for a while. I don't know that I fully understood just how much impact that he had, how much crossover appeal he had. Uh, very, very famous uh, TikTok uh, food reviewer. His whole deal is that he shows up to uh, places and review, like gets their food uh, qu- basically quietly. He sends like his family in and he's very like family oriented. And he's like, hey, what's, you know, I his tagline is like, I got it. Let's try it. Let's rate it on a scale of one to 10. He's got 16 and a half million followers on TikTok. And he was in the DMV. He might still be here, uh, but at the very least last week was in the DMV. And he went to a number of spots, uh, one in Northern Virginia, a couple in the actual district. He went up to Baltimore. Actually, his favorite spot that he went to was in Baltimore, which caused a lot of ruckus because, well, is is Baltimore the DMV? As we've established on this show, Anthony, whenever it's convenient for either the DMV or Baltimore. Like, mm-hmm. the DMV loves to claim Angel Reese because she's from Baltimore, but then they love to crap on everything else from Baltimore. Pretty so much. it's yeah. kind of how that works. Um, but he went to, uh, Flavor Hive in Northern Virginia, which is actually a cool spot. He went to Okonomi Asian Grill in Fairfax. And, uh, then all of a sudden Okonomi Asian Grill in Fairfax, nobody could go there because they were so overwhelmed. That's kind of what happens is he goes somewhere and his followers are like, well, I got to go too. And places go from potentially even on the verge of shutting down to like the most popular spots in town. He's literally saved businesses. So what the work Keith Lee does is is truly tremendous. His mission is fantastic. He because he's made so much money on TikTok, he is now very rich and he is very very generous where he will leave thousands of dollars in tips and also thousands of dollars to be like, "Hey, here's $4,000. The next $4,000 of food is on me." And so, for instance, one of the spots he went to that was very controversial, we'll talk about this in a second, but he went to Hong Kong Carryout in Southeast DC and then like literally went outside in the middle of Southeast and was like, everybody go get food. Like it was literally walking up and down the street being like, Hey, there's food paid for go to Hong Kong, get whatever you want. So the work he does is fantastic. Um, he's very authentic. He's very positive and uplifting. I don't know how he does his, which recommendations he's going to take. Um, so this kind of blew up because Keith did a video that uh, stated that he went to 12 spots in the DMV. They've posted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, they went to more than that. They, they, There's like 12 places that he went to that they haven't posted the videos yet. And there's some of them that he's not going to because it, quote, in his words, wouldn't be constructive. That the food was bad. There was one place that he went to where the deep fryer... Like they, because I think he's got a shellfish allergy and like he could smell the fish on the fried chicken that he got. And they went, his family went back inside and was like, did you fry this in the same oil as the fish? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, that's a huge problem. You can't do that. But he didn't want to out it. Other people definitely did out it. Anthony, should we say where it was? Or do I we, don't think we should. Okay. I, I don't think we should. Look, it's not that hard. Go in the, go in, go in the TikTok comments <laughs> if you want it. But we'll, we'll, we'll go on Keith's method uh, and respect his wishes. Uh, but people were very easy to identify what that place was. And so 
then all of a sudden the DMV is getting this rap is a terrible food city. And this is where we step in, Anthony. This is where we step in. I will let you go first as a D.C. native, as someone who is more in tune, I think, with a lot of the carryout spots around town. We can go carry out versus curry out as well, as that was discussed <laughs> in the videos. But as someone who is more attuned, I think, to a lot of the carryout spots around town, spots that you grew up going to, what do you have to say to Keith Lee and to America? First of all, Keith Lee, I don't know who you get your rex from, but the fact you went to Hong Kong <laughs> on MLK out of all the carryouts in D.C. Carryouts. Tells me a lot. First of all, there are multiple Hong Kongs, but you don't go to the one on MLK. And I'm not going to, you know, trash. Yeah, we're not going to slander any businesses. Yeah, but not, not, we're I'm not in the saying, business. You, of that. You, you definitely could have gone to the one on East Capitol, which is probably like five to ten minutes away from the one in MLK. Um, or you could have gone to my personal favorite, Howard China. There are so many more or so many better carryouts that you could have gone to instead of MLK. So I don't I don't really I will I, say people I, were very proud of his order, although they immediately oh, no. outed the mumbo sauce as the wrong color. Yeah. The, I saw one TikTok that was like that red mumbo yeah. everyone knows it's supposed to be burgundy. Who knew the burgundy and gold was actually about mumbo sauce? <laughs> Yeah, that the, the Momo sauce didn't necessarily look too good to me, but you know yeah. he did he did get it right. Five wings, fries, some Momo sauce on earth, and you get some salt, you get some pepper, whatever your preference is. I don't really get the salt and pepper, but that's uh you know neither here nor there. Fried um, hard. And then also I have a bone to pick with Keith Lee because I feel as though he needs to diversify his palate. To me, it feels as though he only eats soul food and wings. To be honest. That's all he does. Ooh. So if you want to complain about, you know, the customer service, first of all, you're going to a carry out. What kind of customer ser- service in D.C. are you really expecting if there's you're not going to be sitting down in there uh, and you're just walking up to the the register? Well, I think the speed, the friendliness, like there's there's I mean, he said it took three minutes. Well, in Hong Kong, yeah, it was great. Yeah. He was in and out in three minutes and, and you know, hot, fresh, whatever. There's another place they went to that it was like 45 minutes. And yeah, that, another place they ridiculous. went to where they were like, you know, they, oh, it's supposed to open at 1 o'clock. It wasn't until 2.15, like, whole deal. So, I mean, yeah, like, you can grade customer service. But, yeah, on carryout, I I got I, – I think the diversify the palate. That's, that's personally my thing. There it is right there. Let's right. go, Craig. Let's get into it, man. So – the, pro- the problem that I have isn't necessarily even with Keith Lee. It's what's happened to the the conversation that it sparked, which is that all of a sudden, like, D.C. is seen as this crappy food town. And D.C. is one of the greatest collections of ethnic food in the world. And it is a, a reflection of our city. D.C. is a place where you can find people from all over the world because people from all over the world come here to interact with the United States government. And they come here and they their families might move here and then all of a sudden they get a, a they open a restaurant uh, or it's just an international city in general. So they know there's an appetite. And over the years, all these different enclaves of people and especially like you have it within D.C., but the greater DMV area. Now we're talking about truly like if you want any kind of food from Southeast Asia. And I'm not talking just Chinese food. I'm talking about food from any region of China. China's an enormous country. I know, newsflash, there's a billion people there. You think they all eat the same thing? No, if you want Western Chinese food, Eastern, Southern, Northern, like you can find regional Chinese cuisine. You can find obviously Japanese, like the ones that you can find on some version everywhere. But if how often can you find Laotian? How often can you find all these tinier, you know, Micronesian island type of, of country. Like, you can find that stuff in Northern Virginia all over the place, and the quality is outrageously high. Some of the best Indian food in America is here in D.C. He went to Dukum, which is great. Long-time family business, love that. But I think a lot of people in D.C. would tell you the place to go is Tache. And the fact that we have multiple really high-level Ethiopian restaurants is actually the point, not which one you prefer between Dukum and Tache or many of the others. You want Rasika for Indian. You want, like, I could go down the list of just incredible food from all over the world. Sababa so for, uh, like, Israeli, uh, you know, Middle Eastern food. 
Uh, you know, right around the corner from Dukem, there's the Greek spot. If you want more of the carryout, if you want incredible carryout from the Michelin star level chef, go to Yellow. Yellow, uh, which used to be down here in Navy Yard, they, they have the Georgetown location as well. Like, if you want the best, one like truly one of the best pitas you'll ever had, at, and it's under 20 bucks, go to Yellow. Like, there is Stachowski's Deli in, uh, in, in Georgetown. Like, yeah, the, Keith Lee would not be psyched about the customer service there. Getting a sandwich takes forever. That's why they ask you to order ahead online. But if you want a legitimately great, like, delicatessen-style, thick-cut pastrami or turkey or whatever sandwich, they got you at Stachowski's. Uh, again, a little more expensive potentially than uh, $11.95 at, uh, at Hong Kong carryout. But, like, you have... Of course, what DC was known for for a long time, which is the, it's an expense report town. So you, yes, you have tremendous steakhouses that are ridiculously expensive. You have, you know, Bazaar by Jose Andres and Pineapples and Pearl and like fine dining out the wazoo. There is incredible Bresca and Jaunt, like Michelin starred all over the place. But if you know this city really well on the food scene, you also know where to eat great for 20 bucks or 15 bucks or 10 bucks. And I guess that's the thing that I don't want to say like, I'm mad at Keith Lee. I'm throwing down the gauntlet on a guy who's done such incredible stuff and was, you know, sifting through his recommendations and the whole deal. My, my like true disappointment where I'm bummed out is now that all of a sudden DC seems to have a reputation as not a very good food town. And that at, at, unless you want to spend a ton of money on Michelin starred chefs, and that could not be further from the truth. Craig, I'm not going to lie. You just got at him. Um, I didn't get at him. I very specifically oh, got at it, not yeah. at him. I'm like, I would love Keith Lee to come back to the DMV and let me give you five places to go. And I got a couple for you, for him, right now, actually. Oh, we Anthony's got, got his phone out. He's ready to go. We got Jerk at Night. Okay. Bus this, these are more even within his palate. Yes. Bus Boys and po uh, Poets. That's low key a staple in DC. It is. Uh, fish, fish in the hood. Um, Teddy's Roadie. That's in. Um, that's uptown. Um, you got Highlands, Brooklyn Grill, Smokies. Like these are just a few. This is just a few. And you're not gonna break the bank. You know these are you know ten fifteen dollar um, cu cuisine spots where you can go get high quality food in the DC area. So Keith Lee, if you're seeing this, if you're hearing this. Check those spots and I out. will boosh it up just a little bit to say, like, yes, DC has a lot of Michelin starred chefs. A lot of these Michelin starred chefs have open places that are far more accessible than their Michelin starred restaurants. Again, like, if you want to spend a hundred dollars uh, per person, go to Albi. If you want to spend fifteen dollars per person, go to Yellow. If you want to spend a hundred dollars a person and have a tasting menu, go to Imperfecto. If you, I believe this is the same restaurant group and the same chef. If you want to spend uh, 15 to 20 bucks and get a fantastic Peruvian chicken and sides, go to Chicken and Whiskey. Like we're talking about Michelin star, James Beer level chefs that are like, I want my food to be accessible to the people. And they did it in DC. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, you're depending on what your definition of carryout is, if it needs to be like, you know, pictures of food on a menu. To, to qualify, uh, then, yeah, some of these places are, are not it. They're a little a little bit nicer than that. But the quality isn't, like, it's not like I'm sending you to, to a chain fast casual. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. But we're talking about some of the best chefs in the world that have decided to make their food accessible. And he's going to places that I don't know why the hell you got the recommendations to, to go there. Um, anyway... That's that's all over the news. Add that to your newsreel, uh, <laughs> local news stations. Yeah, but I, I low-key blame the people that's recommending him to these places, man. Cause, I just want to – here's the one thing man. I'll blame Keith Leon because they said they do a bunch of research and whatever. I need I need an update to the research department. Please. That's why. And, and I also know, in fairness to him, he tries to focus on places that may be struggling as he wants to boost their business and make sure that, you know, he tries to save local businesses and like yellow and chicken and whiskey and some of the places I mentioned aren't going out of business anytime soon. But they're not going out of business because they're awesome. And so if we're going to highlight the D.C. food scene, feels like that should be part of the narrative. Okay, now I'm done. 
What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.